The Tesla power engine has been added to the game, and certain stations like Meta Station support it by default. I will also cover how to build one at the end of the video. Anyways, Meta Station starts with a Tesla generator, and just like the Singularity, the initial setup of it is the same. It uses emitters, an emitter field generator, and a particle accelerator. Due to it being Meta Station, we have to finish the power particle accelerator, but that only takes a few seconds. All you need is low voltage cables, a Meta Station, and a screwdriver. But we don't want to turn it on immediately, so I'd probably recommend just doing this step last, just in case. But anyways, we just turn all that on and we are good to go. And we need to bring the Tesla generator with us. It's like bringing the Singularity generator. Just like the Singularity, we want to anchor the Tesla generator in the middle. Then we want to round the outer edges, turning on the emitters and the containment fields. Just make sure everything's on to be safe. And we are good to go as far as the emitters are concerned. Next up, we're going to move on to these grounding rods and move them into a better location. It's a machine that keeps lightning from striking too far away. Essentially, the Tesla generator creates a ball of lightning, which shoots lightning out. The lightning will then power these Tesla coils, which are on HV cables, and they will charge the station's power, just like how radiation collectors work. They power, they work indefinitely as long as they get uh, struck by the lightning. They... Tesla engine does not always hit the coils. It hits it most of the time, but if it doesn't hit it, it looks for grounding rods to hit instead. And if it doesn't hit a grounding rod, it will then target an electrical device. And if it hits an electrical device, they will literally explode. And uh, that's how it can get loose. It could essentially, on this station, hit a grounding rod and then arc to an emitter, and that will cause them to explode the emitters and eventually it will loose itself on this station. So I'm not going to show all of this. I'm basically just moving the grounding rods away from the emitters. That is essentially all it is. This is all you have to do to contain the Tesla. We have the emitters on, we have the emitter fields on, and the grounding rods are away from the emitters, keeping the emitters relatively safe. Left click the particle accelerator, scan it, put it to power one, turn it on, and I'm just going to ghost for you so you can see it better, and I'll just further explain how it works once it actually turns on. And the ball lightning is created. It will essentially just bounce around in the containment field, randomly teleporting inside the containment field as well, and it will shoot lightning. And as you can see, it always tries to shoot the Tesla coils first. And now that the Tesla coils have the charge indicator, they are powering these HV wires. And the Tesla engine can essentially power a station forever, as long as the containment never breaks. Uh, it produces a lot of power. Due to the way this is set up, it's pretty much never going to cause problems. Um, it's just going to keep shooting these Tesla coils, and it will always gravitate towards where the Tesla coils are. Um, it The ball lightning is pretty interesting in the way it works. It essentially just keeps moving towards whatever it wants to strike so i guess in this sense it's kind of like the path of least resistance also there is actually no reason to keep the particle accelerator turned on if anything it actually just ups the danger level because this thing will start producing miniature versions of itself that will orbit it after it gets enough energy and they kind of just float around the outer edges of the ball lightning and it can end up striking an emitter that way and loose itself there is now a mini ball lightning, and you can see how it kind of just slingshots further away. That's why you want to have grounding rods in a well good formation around it, because it's a little unpredictable, and you do not want it to hit anything electrical. An interesting fact about the ball lightning is that it will never disappear. Once it is created, it is just there forever. Uh, even if it stops shooting at anything, even if the power of the station dies, it just persists forever. I'm not sure if that's 100% intentional, but the ball lightning is harder to sabotage in general than the singularity, because uh, even if I turn this on three, like, just nothing will happen. It's not like this, it's not like the ball lightning actually gets more uh, benefit from getting struck by the particle accelerator. Unless, like, meteors or something end up breaking the containment, or a syndicate agent comes out here while it's on and risk getting shocked they're not super likely to get shocked but if they're sabotaging it they are definitely setting themselves up to get shocked but uh anyways the yeah, the setting up the tesla on a map that is made for it is not very difficult before i move on to showing you how to build your own i'm going to show you what happens if the tesla shoots something that's not a intended target 
So even with the way I have this set up, even without the Tesla coils, it still ends up shooting the grounding rods because the grounding rods surround pretty much every side. If it comes down here, it'll end up shooting down here. But again, as I mentioned earlier, the ball lightning likes to target and float towards the things it wants to strike. So for example, it sees grounding rods. So if I move these grounding rods, it'll, you'll notice it'll start floating right, but it ended up shooting the emitters. And now it is floating more towards things it wants to shoot, which in this case is the emitters. So at this point, the ball lightning would uh, be freed and it will quite literally go after every single power source and electrical device in the station. As you can see, it will also basically chain stun you to death if it's near you. So we're just going to let it go loose and fall out for a second, just so you can see the level of destruction. Um, this thing will... it eats walls, it eats anything that it directly touches, and it will just keep constantly going directly after power sources. And it's just guaranteed. If this gets loose, the round is over. You just have to call the shuttle before you eventually lose every single power device on the entire station. This thing is significantly more deadly than a Singularity if it gets loose. I'm just going to explain the parts that you need, and you'll have to figure out how to get them on your own, but it's going to be working with cargo and science. The Tesla generator crate is required. It is 4,000 bucks. You need at least... You need a few Tesla coil crates. I would just recommend getting three. That seems to be good. Uh, I would also recommend getting one or two grounding rods because you want to be safe with it. You need to get four containment field generator crates, which is another 4,000. And you need a PA crate, which is another 2,000. All in all, this adds up to you need about $14,000 from cargo. You also need to get emitters from science. Uh, it is possible that engineering will actually have extra, or even if there isn't a Tesla, or if it's only a singularity station, you could just use the emitters from that and save money. So I will do whatever you have to do to save money. I'm going to do all this as a admin goes, so you can A, see better, and B, I have built these before in different videos, and I don't need to be redundant all the time. So we're just going to drag the containment field generators into place. So we anchored them in place, and yes, I understand that the uh, design of this is not perfect, but this is definitely big enough. So we want to move the generator straight into the middle, and that will be turned on last. Uh, definitely not symmetrical, but it doesn't really matter. And then we need at least four emitters, and we're going to drag them pretty far away from the edges of the containment. We really do not want them to get hit by electricity, obviously. That would be pretty bad for us. Now the emitters are in place, and those are definitely far enough away to be safe. Uh, we are going to want to have part of this be strictly for the generators and keeping them away from the emitters is ideal so i feel like this is actually a pretty solid design because remember the ball lightning likes to go and just move towards whatever it wants to strike but we can't be too careful because it will teleport randomly and if it teleports as it's shooting it could easily hit one of these emitters so that's why we're going to put these here and we're going to actually Build a little bridge across and anchor it right in the center. So if it teleports that way, it'll hit that. So we just anchor that in place. And this will actually keep it safe. Um, if you really want to be very cautious, you can also put this here. Uh, you actually don't even need to anchor these, so you don't have to waste time with the wrench. So now we need to build the particle accelerator itself. So we want to make a machine frame in this formation, and we need steel to do this. You can build multiple frames at a time just to speed this up. And if you already know how to build this, feel free to skip ahead until where we actually just turn it on and do some wiring. We need to actually take some time to anchor all of these after you construct them. And you can, again, just kind of spam click through these. Now we must put in the right machine boards. The fuel chamber goes in the middle, and the power box goes up top. We also need an AME fuel jar, but you could always just ask engineering for one, or if you have to buy it from cargo for like another two grand or so. Then we have the port side, which is left. Then we have four, which is middle, and starboard, which is right. And we also need to make a computer, which only takes some extra steel, and it needs to be directly on this side where the uh, computer board was placed. And then we must anchor it, then put in the board, Screwdriver it, put in some more low voltage cables from over here, and some glass, 
and finally screwdriver and now we have that done and one more cable and one more screwdriver now that is ready to go and we must just finish completing the rest of these which is just glass and steel for each of them so you need about three stacks of steel to actually fully complete this not including the rods so really you need more than that and now we screwdriver them all in place And of course the rotations are going to be wrong. And then screwdriver, every part. If you stand on the corners, you can actually do it all in one place. And now we just need to run power out here. Building off of solar will help a ton here. So we A, need to connect high voltage cables, which we could do pretty easily. We could just run it straight through the particle accelerator. So the Tesla coils are now on the HV network. Uh, building one completely from scratch and not just overtaking a singularity is uh, obviously going to take a lot more time with a group of people you could definitely get this done faster than this uh, but i highly recommend you just bomb off solars because they're it's far away from things i'll end up getting struck so far we're pretty much finishing up here all the containment fields are on all the emitters are on everything is wired we are happy so before we turn on the particle accelerator, I realized that the Tesla can actually shoot five tiles away. So we really want to, these emitters to be far away from the grounding rods and five tiles far away from the containment. They have pretty long range, so you don't have to worry about it too much. But anyways, I moved them back two tiles each direction just to keep it safer. So now we're going to turn the particle accelerator on one. Doesn't really matter if you turn it higher, doesn't make a difference, just consumes more power. So you should just avoid doing that anyways. And once it's up, this should theoretically provide infinite power to the station without any risk besides sabotage. But if somebody really wants to sabotage it, they might be able to figure it out anyways. Now the ball of lightning is created, and it will try to prioritize the Tesla coils. If I teleport it away, or I guess I could teleport itself away, you can see it just keeps going back towards this way. And just for clarity, I'll even teleport it in the wrong position. The emitters are too far away, and it will keep trying to shoot at the grounding rods. Uh, there are definitely other shapes and sizes you can make here. I'm sure there's even setups that are just more space efficient. But even if the ball lightning, the mini one, flies off to the sides, it should still completely try to prioritize the grounding rods and the emitters are pretty far away. And if you wanted to be safer, you could always just put more grounding rods, you could put more emitters, but this is pretty budget. Uh, this already costs quite a lot of money if you're buying everything. Um, if you Again, if you're just taking over a previous singularity setup, you can build this a lot quicker with a lot less setup and also it's easy it's much safer to just turn the particle accelerator off once it's on because again will just last forever anyways that's all i got that is the tesla engine thank you for watching